Right, we're on. Welcome. <laughs> in 1930, Sam Sneed came on the scene. Now, Sam Sneed's swing would stand up today's golf. So that's 90 years ago, but his swing would stand up to the 2022 golf scene. If you look at Matt Wolf, John Ram, Victor Hovland, Bryson DeChambeau, these guys start their swing from the feet up. They use ground forces, they use pressure plates to understand how it's working for them or how to, how to make sure the legs initiate the downswing. And Sam Sneed was doing that back in 1930. And I quote, Sneed seldom loops to the outside. However, because of his excellent rhythm and tempo, he has always stressed starting both his backswing and downswing slowly. Downswing and backswing started slowly. Interesting. This gives him sufficient time in changing direction from backswing to downswing to allow his feet and legs to initiate his forward stroke. With legs leading, his shoulders and hands are relegated to being followers. Shoulders and hands are relegated. Bottom half's working first. 1930. So therefore, the hands do not have an opportunity to shove or throw the club into the outside loop. What does this all mean? Well, it's pretty simple, really. Sam Sneed was ahead of his time. So we're talking 90 years ago. And you look at, like, say, George Gankus now, he is teaching bottom half working first, this squatting position, getting the bottom half to move, almost a disassociation from the bottom half to the top half, like a baseball player would have. A pitcher, bottom half disassociated, and then top half follows, relegated. Hands and arms are relegated. Carbon face. They never had that 90 years ago. So, Sneed initiates the downswing with his legs, feet and legs, Backswing, the takeaway is slow, and the start of the downswing is slow, and then the downswing is initiated from the feet up. So slow backswing, slow takeaway, he was slow, got to the top, and then the feet and legs would work, and then the downswing would start slowly, and then from there he's all power into impact. All power because it's the bottom half that's moved first. He's there, the hands are relegated, relegated, left behind, not interested in, up to here, and then from there, starts the downswing slow, and I assume he means slow with the hands, because if the bottom half moves first, the hands will pause there for just a fraction. Up to here, moves the bottom half first, left knee is flexed at impact, not a straightened left knee impact, it's a flexed knee impact, and the right heel comes away from the right toe. So he gets to there, and then this happens there, almost straight right leg at impact, flexed left leg impact and the glutes get withdrawn at impact so the bum's tucked under. That was Sam Sneed. That is modern day golf. That was 1930. That was 1930. 90 years ago Sneed's nailed it. Sneed continues. His arms swing back and up in direct conjunction with the turning of his body. So he's done nothing with them. He's just turned the body on the backswing. There's absolutely no independent lifting or turning of the club with the hands and wrists, no flippiness at the top, no casting with the hands at the start of the downswing. In short, his hands are quiet throughout his swing. They do nothing. He turns his body, he then turns the bottom half on the way back, the top half follow, the hands and wrists and arms have done nothing. Just got distracted there. In short, his hands are quiet throughout the swing. It is this lack of wristy jerking, above all else, that makes Sneed's swing look so smooth. It's also a major reason for his remarkable consistency over the years. So hands and wrists are quiet for the whole motion. Bottom half's working hard. Which takes us way back to all these ground forces that we were talking about earlier. These pressure plates that we have nowadays. Chris Como, do you remember Chris Como? Was he Tiger's swing analysis guy or coach or whatever he was? He got on the diving board, 10 metre diving board, jumped off, swung a driver as far as he could. He could get back to about here and through to there, splash into the water, comes out of the pool, swam down, got his club, come out of the pool, then stands on the ground and shows you how much more rotation he can have because he's using the ground. Incredible. So Sneed, 90 years ago, and we're doing the same thing today and teaching the same thing today. Sneed's address position, take away slow, start the downswing slow, and the start of the downswing is slow because it's the bottom half of the body that's working. That would be a fast start to the downswing, but look, it's all hands and arms. That's not Sneed. Slow take away, up to the top, and then from there the left knee is flexed, stays flexed, to this position. So that is the start of the downswing for Sneed. The glutes are engaged, butt cheeks engaged. There's only one way to really describe that sensation. Imagine at the top of your swing you're about to poo. Hold it in, clench that butt in there, and turn at the same time. <laughs> Massive apology for that analogy, but hey, you get the picture, eh? Slow back, 
left knee externally, ro externally rotates, all modern chat, 1930 of course, all modern chat, externally rotates, left leg's ra rather straight, as the right heel, sorry, right leg's rather straight, as the right heel comes away from the right toe to there. Watch McElroy, McElroy impacts there. He's got this beautiful action of that, engaging the glutes there, 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 oof, carbon face. We'll do it piece by piece just to get the hang of this, so sneed. There, chest position, good. Slow takeaway, that's where I fail. Slow takeaway, up to there, left knee extended rotates as we pull the hips in, or pull the glutes underneath, which makes that happen, which gets us into that position. There, there, there. Feels good. It's hard to do though, because the hands and arms, as I've mentioned in the past, is the only point of contact with the golf club that we have. So we are inclined to use them so much. Sneed never. Most guys on tour don't. The modern game doesn't. It never happened in 1930. Let's try and not start that now. Let's try and not start that carry on. There we go. Slow takeaway, left knee extend rotates, glutes pull together. Hands and wrists do nothing. Remember Sneed said, the takeaway, the backswing, the hands and arms go upwards as a byproduct of the rotation of the body. So the body turns and that makes the hands and arms go upward. That's why the takeaway is slow. Ah! That's why the takeaway is slow, because he's not done that, he's turned. So the large muscles are pushing the club head away. There, then from there, left knee, glutes engaged, and right heel to there. It's good. Feels okay for me that. Quite happy with that, to be fair. Yep. I do really feel though that when I head to here, left knee, for me, left, left knee external rotating is perfect. There. Squeezing the cheeks together, there, is the vital component that Mr. Steed was talking about. Seven majors the guys won. I mean, this works. That was good. Got that one, got added more speed to that. I'm just going to keep hitting if you're okay with that. <laughs> There, I'm feeling, I don't, I, the slow takeaway is tricky, so slow, body controlling that, nothing with the hands and arms, so passive, and then from there, that. That is good. That is good, I can feel that disassociation that I was talking about, about the, the picture in the bottom half disassociates and then the top half follows. It's always a hard one, you feel as though you're really doing it, of course exaggerating. I'm going to exaggerate this one as much as I can. So the hands start down slowly because the bottom half's moved. That was good. That was good. Classic golf though, it's just experimenting all the time. Always experimenting to try and find the motion. This is 1930 technology, or 1930 swing theories. But you can see Matt Wolf. Matt Wolf's in here, picks up, gets to there and then he's whoosh, bang right in there. Exactly the same as Steed was. John Ram, watch John Ram's disassociation, lower half goes, top half hands are still up here. He's hit the golf ball. <laughs> Incredible, Victor Hovland, he's a major winner, get money on him to win a major, I tell you. Still not quite getting that, that's it, 
That's it. Oh, that was good. So by monitoring my right ankle there, I could see, I could see I had that going on. I felt as though I had that going on. Whereas before, I think I've still been a little bit rooted. So guys, there we go, Sam Steed, 1930s he came on the scene. 90 years later on, we're still doing exactly the same swing. That's absolutely incredible. With the modern technology we have nowadays, we're obviously able to look at flight path, angle of attack, dynamic loft, spin loft, all these sort of things. Pressure plates, never had that back in the 90s. So explaining how they did it in these old books is fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant. It's more, it makes it more, I guess, easy to digest. Numbers, I mean, if you're a numbers guy, fair enough, but certainly in pressure plates, hard to quite understand what's going on there. If somebody tells you this is what I do with my legs, give it a try. You might win seven majors. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for hitting the bell notification, and thanks for the thumbs up. Hit that button, hit it right now.